tells you one, that the parity and growth of lacrosse don't be surprised to see new teams in here. We haven't seen Gettysburg in a while, but they go after top-notch talent year in and year out. It doesn't shock you when you have guys like Tommy Keough and McGrath and Riker leading the troops. Face-off win for Gettysburg. That's a big win, good start of the half for the Bullets. Lemon comes in and cleans house. Big check by the senior Luke Lemon. Cortland gets it back, and they will head in transition. Flagged out! Flag comes out. Flagged out! Flagged out! The officials who are flag mics down. yelling flag down. That was a clear penalty Easy. right along the sidelines. Red Dragons can score here, and they do. Brandon Miziak puts it in the top corner. Cortland is in front, five to four. Goal is good. Goal is wiped out. Goal is good. The first lead of the afternoon for the Red Dragons. Well, when you can get a ton of energy from a defensive hit like this, bring the ball up. Right now, it's a free shot with the penalty down. You go after it, and Mesiak just gets to the middle of the field. As a defensive team, you always want to force the offensive team down the sideline. Right there, Mesiak, that little hit to the outside, creates space inside, gives an outstanding look at the middle of the field. But it was the hit by Levin, I thought. Just energized that run right there. Luke Lemon, one of the rare Cortland Red Dragons, not from the state of New York. He's from Colorado Springs, Colorado. A four-year starter and a first-team All-American. Got that started. Another face-off possession, though, for Gettysburg. That's a good sign, considering as a team, Gettysburg came in at 46%, and DeLuca came in at 70% for Cortland. Speaking of which, let's look back at Gettysburg's keys. Well, that early start, it came out 3-1. Tie up DeLuca, not so bad. You know, Cortland won seven out of three in that first half. But I thought Gettysburg, with their wing play, sometimes negated a quick draw from DeLuca. We didn't see too many pushes out front from the sophomore that created instant offense. So although they lost some, they set up their losses better, I thought. And they've won the first two of the second half. A good sign here for Gettysburg, but Cortland has the lone goal of the third quarter just underway in the third, and they lead for the first time this afternoon at five to four. The Bullets try to feed the crease. The officials don't buy the fact that it's a shot, so it will head to Cortland. And as the Red Dragons take possession, we check out their keys to the game. Get Morgan rolling. Zero goals, only an assist. And Tota in tight. I think he's the recipient of Joey Morgan attention a lot of times. Only one goal out of him. Tribute to the Gettysburg defense. Nice defense of the ride there by Tyler Feely. But a lot of times when you see Tota in the action early, it's really a result of great midfield offense. Guys like Mesiak and Morgan creating space and then looking inside to Tota. But when you have great defensive midfield play like we're seeing out of Gettysburg, those opportunities for Tota are limited. Dano Lynch has possession, moves it to his left after the turnover by Portland that gave it back to Gettysburg. Freddy! The Bulls Freddy! Are back out. Set up the offense. Here's Lynch down the left side. Up top for O'Donnell. Extra pass McGrath. Stutter step move. Trying to get a shot off. Guarded by Hoyt. It's knocked down and scooped up by Hippenbecker. Hippenbecker the save. Morgan the clear. Transition chance here for Portland. Morgan brings it to the middle of the field. That will go towards the net. Bounce shot goes well over the cage and out of bounds. And backed up by the Red Dragons. A look back at Hippenbecker's first save of the second half. Well, it's a roll to the outside by McGrath. Just an easy save for Hippenbecker. Didn't look like McGrath put much under that shot. Speed-wise, Hippenbecker makes the easy stop. Miziak has the hat trick today. Six on the turn. He scored the last one for Cortland. 
Last two actually for the game tying goal late in the second quarter to make it 4-4 and the go-ahead goal to make it 5-4. DeLuca tries to dodge, shut down, moves it along up top for Morgan. Good ball movement here for Portland. Start of the third. Morgan straight away. Here's another six on six set with no time. Hey John! I don't know if it's just him not being able to get on the field from the defensive midfield position. Misiak in front spins and scores the feed from DeLuca. Thank you. I think he heard you. On the stall. Portland opens up a two goal advantage at six to four. Hey, Matt, nine get fixed. Miziak sure. playing his best ball here. You see, that's a nice speed inside, but the Gettysburg defense right there. You have to play physical and play the body inside here. Miziak catches that between two Gettysburg defensemen. Not even a check there. Down. I mean, if you're a goalie, you have to call out the defense right there. Play with the body inside. He needs to feel a defensive presence inside on a close range shot like that. Portland starting to roll here. They win the faceoff. They're on a 4-0 goal scoring run. Gettysburg has not scored since the three minute and 24 second mark of the first quarter after going up 4-2. It's been all Red Dragons. Portland settles in offensively. Clark, I think this is a dangerous portion of the game right now for Gettysburg. They haven't scored in a long time, and now all of a sudden it's a two-goal deficit. And if any team can't afford to go behind in this game, it hey, is Gettysburg run, because run. Portland has the dominant face-off play of DeLuca that can create a run if they were to go down by a few. I'm not sure if Gettysburg has that. Feed in front, it's Mulvaney. Was triple teamed, deftly got out of that. Able to move along to the team on the right side to Stefano. Drives towards the crease, checked by Odierna. Good solid defense by the sophomore from Oyster Bay, New York. We saw Odierna earlier on in that second quarter Triple with some slides nice up. takeaway checks. Big rangy guy, Odierna. Duffy, a senior, feeds it up top for Mulvaney. Thought about the shot. That one rings off the post. This is an absolute rip by Kroll. You heard the pipe. It knew to go that way, not that, that way. That ball's on cage. Here we go, sir. We're looking at 7-4 right there. Defensive pressure right there. You have to press out against the shooters if you're Gettysburg. Play the hands. Uncontested shots right now in this early stage of the second half. That's not what you want out of your defense. And Cortland who we heard from their head coach, Steve Bevel, heading into the locker room at halftime. Started slowly, they are playing with a lot of confidence right now. Morgan takes a big hit there. Keo back Stick out down. on the field right now. Gettysburg, he switches now to cover Morgan. This right here is DeLuca on the left wing. Feed in front, saved by Fershman. Went low to stuff Toda. The freshman found his way to the crease, but Fershman makes the save. Ground ball stays with Portland. Kroll moves it along. What a great save by Fershman right there. It was the feed, though, of DeLuca to find the backside underneath cut by Toda. Great vision of DeLuca. Here's Toda right here. Shoots over his shoulder. Wait. And it's backed up by Cortland. Look at him, step on the field, sells save. out for it. Step on. Couldn't get there for Gettysburg. Big save there by Fershman to prevent a three-goal deficit. And it's the tempo right now. Cortland completely controlling the six-on-six -six set. We didn't see it early on in the game. I think Cortland, even their first couple goals off the of transition, never really got their offense in sync. DeLuca winds and fires. It's saved by Fershman. 
And if there's anything that can spark this Gettysburg team, it is hot goaltending. That's what they're getting right now. First been two big saves, but good defense by the Red Dragons. 20, 20, 20. And it will head in the direction of Cortland. Nice D by the Red Dragons just when Gettysburg was getting it to their offensive side of the field. Greg Martin was bumped out of bounds. Look at the steady cam right here. A blown clearing opportunity for Gettysburg. Tenacious ride by Morgan. Never giving up on the play. The great midfielders do all those little things, not just score goals and assist on plays. You ride, you play defense, you get after it. From a full field standpoint, Morgan certainly can do that. Miziak over there as well. So Gettysburg has to play some more defense in the third quarter. That's really what they've been playing since the mid-first quarter when they last scored. Mulvaney up top, loops a pass to the right wing. The good news definitely though for Gettysburg is first and played very well. And he'll need to continue hey, hey, that play. Gettysburg needs it back and they need to find something offensively. But first, it's defense as Mulvaney goes towards the cage. Circles Cut. it back, Dutkowski. No angle to shoot, checked by Keough. John! He forces now. Dutkowski Keep out. It Keep it in! Keep it in! You hear the officials Keep yell, it Keep it in, stall warning against Portland. Portland keeping it in the box right here. Lacrosse, if you're stalling, you're not showing any effort to attack the cage, they'll call a stall warning. Ball on the ground, Portland keeps it. Cross field pass. Oh, Dierna playing some solid D against Stefano Up top, Mulvaney thought about it, doesn't do it, backs to the top of the box. Now it's Kroll. Spinning, shooting, misses wide of the net, backed up. By the Red Dragons, they'll maintain possession. Good long possession here for Portland. Let's visit now again with Matt McConnell down to the sidelines. Matt. Guys, you talked about the mental focus. Can Gettysburg hang? Well, they are facing their biggest def uh, deficit of the entire game. And the mental focus, you know, you talked to Hank Janzik this week. He said, we've gone after the kids. We've had hard practices. We've done the video. The question is, can they get this stop and figure out a way to get back into the lead? Thank you, Matt. And that is a great question. Can they figure out the stop here? Right now, they're playing solid defense, but Portland content to just sit on this. Keep it down, keep it down, keep it down. Portland is just dominating. Ball possession right here. Crushing the clock, if you look at it. Under five minutes in this quarter. This quarter's flying by without a really good Gettysburg possession. Right directly behind the cage, the fourth attackman. Freshman gets it up top. Mulvaney misses Wait, it's wide of the net. Dario, goalie, freshman, Dario. freshman there, right to Mulvaney. And they hear Dario. the officials. They'll say it stays with Portland. I'm questioning that ball right there. When the ball went out of bounds, Keep it in. I thought Keep first it in. was clearly closer to the ball when it went out of bounds. They awarded Cortland possession. Easy one. With another Easy. opportunity here to kill some clock and score another goal, make it a three goal margin. That was a blown call. Blank Portland, the beneficiary Blank now can down. work some more Blank clock. Down. Leading by Blank two. Down. Flag down. Officials yell flag down, penalty upcoming. Morgan scores first. Morgan touches it home. It's a three goal lead for Cortland. The Red Dragons are rolling in the Division III National Championship game. You know, sometimes you think it's not a big deal. If a ball is awarded here. Clearly, first, when that ball goes out of bounds, he's closer to the ball when it goes out of bounds. That's the ball, not closer to the sideline. And then it gives Cortland another opportunity to keep their top six players on the field. And Morgan plays off ball. Morgan accustomed to breaking down a defense up top. He does it off ball with a great backdoor cut. 
five straight goals for Cortland. They lead by three, it's seven to four, and they win another faceoff. Here come the Red Dragons in a hurry. Score again for Cortland. It's Kroll on the right wing. Six in a row for the Red Dragons. Might be a good time to call a timeout if you're Coach Jancic. Stop the bleeding. But when you have a great face-off man like DeLuca, your two and three goal run can be four or five, the blink of an eye. Right off of the face-off, the push in front, the clean break for Cortland. And then the rip by Kroll, Red Dragons 8-4. And another face-off win for DeLuca. De Stefano. that ball is deflected off O'Dear, and it looks like it hit his hand, and it goes well over the net, backed up by Cortland. The last two Red Dragon goals, just nine seconds between them. Cortland is rolling, and Hank Jancic and Gettysburg, they are reeling. Let's check back in with Matt. Yeah, guys, hey, Hank Jancic, the head coach of Gettysburg, was screaming for a time out there, but they couldn't get him because they couldn't make communication with the official at center, uh, at center field. So the play moved on. We'll see if that has an effect here. Well, I think that was a huge missed call right there in terms of not getting that time out. I understand why Coach Jancic wanted it so bad. This third quarter, critical for an offense that's reeling, Jason, like you mentioned on such a drought, and then you have a Red Dragon run. Time to regroup. You look at the second half shots, 12 to one. I can't even recall a good possession this entire third quarter for Gettysburg. Well, it's been 30 minutes since Gettysburg scored. The last two Cortland goals, nine seconds apiece, or in between the two, so. Those numbers tell the story right there. Cortland scoring in bunches, especially here in the third quarter. They've scored four unanswered in the third, and Gettysburg hasn't scored since the first. Now the Bullets take possession, and boy, do they need to put one on the board here. Easy stick down. Great defense right there by Tom Burke. You saw him on that last faceoff start that fast break off of the Luka draw. Oh, shoot. Lynch, it eventually gets to his stick after it was deflected a couple of times. Schneidman presses out defensively. Cahill to his left, now his right, back to his left. Burke is draped all over him. Good defense by Burke, the D midi. And if you look at this Cortland team, these guys are young. There's some talent on this field. Only freshmen and sophomores are getting it done. Saw that great pass by Greg Wright on the last Morgan goal. And guys like Mulvaney, only a freshman. Wright, a freshman. DeLuca, a sophomore. Up top shot save by Hippenbecker. I'm not sure if he saved that so much as the ball just hit him because he didn't even move. But Gettysburg will keep it. Dano Lynch settles things down, guarded by Schneidman. Lynch towards the cage. Little high step move there, moves it along behind the net. Get Lemon. stick, get stick. Did the officials say get stick as Lemon thunders away with a couple of checks on Brody. The officials, of course, Mike here by CBS College Sports. You can hear them in the background all afternoon. Listen in to what the action is like down on the field. To the crease it goes. Saved by Hippenbecker. It was Brody in tight. Hippenbecker missed the save. You see Hippenbecker raising his hands. For a goalie, when you get a cushion of an 8-4 lead, a lot of times you play your best relaxed ball. We're seeing it right here in the eye box, Hippenbecker. What a save. Get right get right that was a good opportunity there for Gettysburg. We're under a minute to go in the third quarter, a quarter that has been dominated by Cortland. Approaching 30 seconds here in the third quarter. Look for Cortland to keep doing what they're doing. Controlling possession. Taking care of the ball. Going through their offensive progression. 
Keep it in! 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 You think the refs want to keep it in? You hear the shout right there, another stall warning. When the team's up, they're very sensitive to that one, and another rip easy, for Mesiak. Mesiak puts it into the net after the officials tell them to keep it inside. And Portland is on fire, a five goal advantage. Well, that's a backbreaker. A rip by the junior. Mesiak, 6'1, 200 pounds. Brute force to get above goal line extended with one second left. That one is a backbreaker for Gettysburg. What a huge game here for Miziak. Five goals in the afternoon, has eight now in the tournament. Gettysburg will win that final faceoff of the third quarter, but it is a quarter that the Bullets will certainly want to forget. After being tied at four at the half, it is all Cortland. In the third quarter, they score five unanswered, seven unanswered in all, a five goal lead for the Red Dragons as we head to the fourth quarter. Look at the scoring by quarter. It started out with Gettysburg scoring four in the first. They haven't scored since. And in the third quarter, you see all Cortland scoring five unanswered. Well, today at 2.30, CBS College Sports presents Legends, the 1989 NCAA Lacrosse Championship. Join us as we commemorate the 20th anniversary of perhaps the greatest NCAA lacrosse title game of all time, featuring Syracuse and Johns Hopkins, it's a lacrosse Sunday from start to finish on CBS College Sports, the pulse of college sports in Kark. Every sport has that game or handful of games that sort of define it, and that game is certainly it for lacrosse. Well, is it for me? It was my first Final Four, and I've never missed one since. Watching players like Dave Petromala, Gary Gate, Paul Gate, Tom Marichek, Matt Panetta, they paved the way for future stars. You look at a guy like Dave Petromala revolutionized the defensive position, followed up by guys like Rick Beardsley from Syracuse. That was a game that I think was monumental in terms of the growth of lacrosse, the style of play. Every defender wanted to be the next Petromala, every offensive player the next gate. And that certainly has led to the level of play we see here today, not just at the Division I level, but the D3 level here. In the national championship game, of course, the D2 national championship game coming up later on CBS College Sports. Just a great day side, of lacrosse side. here on the network. That ball hits the side of the net. Portland will look to clear. As for the here and now, Gettysburg needs stops, they need goals, and they need face-off victories. And they need to put pressure defense on Cortland. Go out, take some chances. You're down five right now. You need to gamble. A lot of shut-off defenses, I think, for Tommy Keough. That means all five defenders lock off their man and let number 15 go to work and try to take the ball away. Certainly the Division Three Player of the Year is a great weapon in the arsenal for Gettysburg to get back into this game because we saw him earlier with one of the more fantastic stick checks of the weekend. No, they don't. No, they don't. Two, three, four, five. This is Morgan in front. Procedure two White. Too many. Too many. Too many Outside men here. on the field for Cortland. We'll see Gettysburg try to clear the ball. Back up, back up. But you have to gamble if you're Gettysburg right now. You don't want to hold anything back. Couple goals here in the early stages of the fourth quarter. Then you start chipping away. You get this game to 9-6 early on in this fourth quarter. Then you have yourself a ball game. And Gettysburg can score. They're not a team that is a, a ball control style team. So if they can start putting points on the board, up and down suits them just fine. 
some big hitting by the Cortland defense, and Gettysburg can't get anywhere near the cage on that opportunity. Back up top it comes. Andrew Ryan. And he'll move it along. Gettysburg here, substitutes some offensive middies out onto the field. They need offense in a hurry in the fourth offense. quarter of the Division III National Championship game from Gillette Stadium in Foxborough, Massachusetts. Brody by his defender to the cage. Good trail check, side, feet in side, front. Side. Shot is tipped away by Hippenbecker. Right it's there. loose behind the net. The ball's right there. Easy, man, get up slowly. Portland once again successful clearing the ball. I think they've had a huge advantage in that department here today. Led by guys like Tom Burke, the defensive midfielder. Been calling his name quite a bit today. Clearing ground ball, starting fast breaks. Nice, 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 I'm liking this. It does seem like Burke is always around the ball. Short stick D. Mitty Jr. from Massapequa, New York. Yes, you do, Pequa on Long Island, they call it Pequa. They've had some Both great players over the years in Nassau County. And some future stars really impressed with their young players. Some of their youth coaches, guys like Jim Conan, has some future stars in Nassau County that will go on to great pastures in the Division Three, Division One ranks. That's a program that I think traditionally is up there on Mass Nassau County. Miziak feeds the crease behind the back. Shot is saved by Firstman. Firstman comes out of the cage. He's using his speed, and he clears. Flag Here comes Firstman. Flag comes out. Firstman brings it all the way into the offensive zone, draws a penalty, makes a big save. Perhaps that is the spark here for Gettysburg. Stay, stay, stay. No. Well, I think Firstman's held up his end of the bargain today, laying up nine goals, high percentage shots right on top of him. This kid obviously wants to play right some here. lacrosse. Right on. The right wing, no, shot, no, score, no. Tom O'Donnell. Deep on the right side. The drought is over for Gettysburg. And the Bullets draw within four. Tom O'Donnell feeling the energy from their goalie, Firstman. Just rips it. Cortland nine, Gettysburg five. At the deep. Back at Gillette Stadium, 9-5. Cortland in front of Gettysburg. For all the latest news, stats, polls, and more, visit NCAA.com. NCAA.com is the official online home for all 88 NCAA championships. Big turnaround here for Gettysburg. They went 38 minutes and 27 seconds between goals. It started with Firstman's 11th save. He sparked let's go, the bullets, and now they are let's back go, to within let's four. Go. But always looming oh, is DeLuca the at the face-off position. Oh, oh, DeLuca oh, faces oh, off at about 70%. Who. They just have to have one. He'll go nose to nose with Stanton. Yeah. An interesting move right here. DeLuca not taking this face-off. It's actually Justin Bettino. Gettysburg wins. Kind of a puzzling move. Maybe DeLuca isn't at full strength. He stays out of the field quite a bit. Yeah, you're right, Patino, 21. I saw the one, just assumed DeLuca. He'd been out there all afternoon, but Justin Patino, the sophomore, no slouch himself, by the way. Patino wins 58% of the faceoffs he's taken so far. Now 67 of 114 on the season. Gettysburg gets possession, every possession so valuable, so they call timeout. It's 9-5, Cortland. It's Gettysburg ball, they trail by four, nine to five in the fourth quarter of the Division Three National Championship game, 10.07 to go. And now let's take a look at the AT&T game recap. 
A run down of the numbers, and that shot differential part is huge in this game so far, though Gettysburg has started to turn it around. But it's been the possession of Cortland that really coincides with that shot discrepancy from Gettysburg, 31-19. The stat kind of creeping up right now. Face-offs won, 10-8. I thought that if Gettysburg can approach that 50% mark face-off-wise against DeLuca and Bettino, that two-headed monster from Cortland, they could be in this ballgame. And that's our AT&T game recap. Now, the reason why Bettino was taking that faceoff, it was DeLuca who slashed first in the goaltender along the sidelines. So actually, Gettysburg on the man advantage here. So that's why Bettino came into the game. Huge opportunity here for Gettysburg. They score about 27% of the time. And that's like a two-fold. Behind the back shot is stopped. I'm not sure. It got to Hippenbecker. Ball is loose. That's Pops okay. out towards the corner. What? Oh, it goes to Cortland. Well, I was in the middle of a thought right there. It was like a two-fold gift for Gettysburg. You get the penalty against Deluca. Then you take him out of the game to win a faceoff. Would have been an outstanding opportunity to kind of capitalize on that man advantage. Cortland gets the ball bouncing their way. Nice play. Pucci thought he had it in his stick. He knocked it to the ground on the ride. The pass coming from Schneidman. Now Cortland finally able to clear. Pucci thought he picked that one clean. Ball loose along the end line. Out of bounds. Touches the line and heads to Gettysburg. Every possession so vital for Gettysburg. Obviously because they trail by four, but also because now that the penalty is over and Cortland is back to full strength, they'll be dealing with DeLuca in the faceoff position and they turn it over right at midfield. But here comes Keo to the rescue. The D3 player of the year. Keo goes to the net and gives it up. Big play by Tommy Keo to get that back to the Bullets. Monster ground ball by Keo. Almost another blown clearing opportunity. And although you might not think of those as the biggest mistakes in a game like this where Cortland has shown that they can kill the clock at minutes at a clip, I mean, this is a huge possession for Gettysburg. Lynch whistles it wide of the net. Dano Lynch, on, sophomore on, midi from Medfield, Massachusetts, playing in front of the hometown fans here in Foxborough, Medfield, a few miles down the road. On the crease, saved by Hippenbecker. May have caught part of the post, and a crease violation against Reichert. He was right on the doorstep, goal line extended. You're seeing some serious energy out of Hippenbecker. Post, got the post, got the post. But if you look at the end of that play, the Gettysburg player falls into the crease. They call a crease violation. He was pushed by the Cortland defender. Remember that backup no call. Freshman appeared to get out of the cage, which led to a big goal for Cortland in the third quarter. Perhaps another one missed that goes against Gettysburg. Now again, the Red Dragons with seven and a half to go in the ball game and a four goal advantage can slow the tempo. Hats off to this Cortland defense, letting up five goals led by Hippenbecker. Save Freshman. No slowdown for Cortland here. Now Gettysburg has to clear. They've had trouble in this game. And the officials throw a flag at first. I thought it might just be a push. But the flag comes out, penalty, and another man advantage chance here for the Bullets. This was certainly with possession. You take another look at this one. Clearly a trick right there. Goalie top left. Top I don't know left. if they yes. called it a push or a trip. If it's a push with possession, no, 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 it'll be 30 no, no, no. seconds. Hey, hey, hey. Right. One minute on a trip right there. Oh, 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 Sean. It's a personal Sean. foul as opposed Sean. to the 30-second technical foul. And Gettysburg has been the really, the one really bad, I guess, is the way to put it on the man advantage. They're 0-3, only one shot, though, so far on their three man advantage opportunity. But not real shocked here, under 30% for the season, right? You wanna be higher up in terms of man advantage. 
to really be an efficient unit clicking on all cylinders. Always want that man up over 30%. They're at 27. And the, the other figure looming is the fact that only 11 times and now 89 tries has Cortland allowed the team to score when they are down a man that's under 13%. Those are incredible numbers. When you think about it, holding the opposition's man advantage team, the 13%. To the right wing, shot, save, Hippenbecker. Ball is loose. It was Danny Colalora, the senior, a fourth attackman, was alone in tight. Hippenbecker makes the save. Now Noble will look to clear and does. Easy, easy. Turn on. Feet in the eye box right there, the save by Hippenbecker. This is the best goaltending we've seen from a Cortland team since their national championship run with Gable, who was brilliant in 2006. Gettysburg is back in this one, but Hippenbecker shutting the door for Cortland. It's a four goal lead for the Red Dragons. Thank you very much, Matt McConnell down on the sidelines, Jason Chandler, Paul Carcaterra up in the booth at Gillette Stadium in Foxborough, Division Three National Championship game on CBS College Sports. 9-5, Cortland in front, five of those goals scored by Brandon Miziak. Well, Miziak was the fifth leading goal scorer during the season for Cortland. Today, numero uno, five goals, doing it and an assortment of ways, dodging, breaking down a defense, off ball, brute force, 45, has been brilliant. Miziaka Jr. from New Hartford, New York. Seven shots, five goals, two ground balls, has 31 in the year, seven on the tournament. Just a monster game on the biggest stage. Keo against Morgan, the matchup we've been watching. Keo, the D3 player of the year. Morgan, a first team All-American. And Morgan able to elude the assorted checks of Keo that time, and Cortland keeps possession. Now if you're Cortland, you go back to that ball control <laughs> offense. Make the clock your ally. Oh, nice Stepping check there, up. that's Stepping what they need. Up. Yanni Piri, senior captain from Portland, Maine. Another New England entry. Ball just falls right out of the stick there, though. Gettysburg able to keep it. It's Fershman, who's been very good here for Gettysburg. Had that big save, drew the penalty, which led to Gettysburg's fifth goal. Hippenbecker down the other end has been good as well, and he kicks that one away. The third save of the quarter for Hippenbecker. The other two were both in man down situations. He's all right, the ball's up. Gettysburg maintains possession, however. Every single possession so critical now for the Bullets as we approach the five minute mark in the fourth quarter. And Gettysburg trailing by four, trying to win their first ever national championship. You're Gettysburg here, you wanna go after Joey Morgan, number 19, he's gassed. Playing offense that whole last series, running back on the defensive end. Take advantage of this opportunity. Five. That one right hit down. the post as well. Stay Again, offense, Hippenbecker offense, offense, may have bought a piece. Good. Some hitting in front of the cage, but a couple of times this quarter, Hippenbecker, the beneficiary of the post. Clear for Cortland. More good defense there by Gettysburg. They they're keeping the pressure on. They're doing what they have to do. Coach, try to get possessions, but left. offensively, they cannot figure Wait, out right, this Portland on. defense. It's the Portland defense, the pressing ability, the one-on-one -on -one play. Some great goaltending by Hippenbecker. Let's make no mistake about it. Some unfortunate pipe shots. This is the Portland defense, by the way, that pitched a shutout in one game this season. 22-0 against Morrisville State. They know how to play defense in Portland. 
empty to the crease and a score for Gettysburg. It was Pucci in tight, made the catch in traffic, spun, shot, and scored. Gettysburg crawls to within three. Well, Pucci's their leading goal scorer for a reason. 36th tally of the year, it's the inside play of number 16 right here. You see him going back and forth a little bit, catches the ball and sticks it low. A real nice feed by Dano Lynch, spotting Pucci inside. So back to the faceoffs we go, DeLuca back in, B. Stanton. Ball on the ground, nice round ball by Burke. Keo thunders away with a couple of checks, can't dislodge it, and Cortland will take possession. Under four to go in the ball game. Keep your composure if you're Cortland. That shot whistles wide of the net. Back up there, in stop. the person of Jay DeStefano. Three minutes and 47 and seconds to you call yourself a national champion. Nothing no stupid, need to really gentlemen. press Nothing offensively, stupid. use the clock, spread the field before the two minute warning where you have to keep it in the box, use the entire offensive end. Portland has one national title in the past three seasons. This is their fourth straight appearance in the Division Three National Championship game going for two out of the last Mike four. Salisbury has the last two. Portland won in 06, spectacular minutes, overtime guys, fashion. Hands. I mentioned Gable, the goaltender, was so fantastic in that game that, Mark, you and I did. This lead a bit more comfortable for Cortland. No, but no, still, it's no, just he didn't three. when you called Balls it. Balls on the ground. The officials saying no call. Bodies everywhere. Gettysburg has it. Oh, they need to the clear. Both teams look real down. tired, especially on this clear here. Gettysburg right on the front, right needs on the front. possession. They get it. They need to get it across midfield, however, and that's been a bit of a problem in the second half. My turn. Hey, enough, Mike. Injured Josh, player Josh. behind the play. Can't quite player. see the number, Kark. I'm oh. not sure if you saw who it was when he went down for Cortland. Hey, guys, come into the bench. Originally, I saw bench. Morgan question, taking a beating. We'll it is Morgan. It's 19 up. Morgan. Their senior yeah, captain the from Putnam Valley, New York, first team All-American. Come on in for a sec. He's been all over the field, offense and defense, really. Let's take a look at what happened to Morgan, 19 down on the ground for Cortland. Well, he was just trying to kill some clock. Where's the ball gonna start? Right where it is. Just got throw. crushed from the other side right there. Ben Engelman, number one for Gettysburg, laid the hit. Morgan has a goal and an assist on six shots this afternoon. I wouldn't be surprised, though, if it's a Charlie Horse or possibly getting the wind knocked out of him. Right Looks Folks, like they're working right on his leg box. right now. These guys have been on the field. It's warm here. Certainly tired on that last possession. You could see that he wanted to Tommy Keogh was gassed as well. And I was watching. It was 239 to go in the fourth. 9-6 Cortland in front as they attend to Morgan. Just a reminder that today at 2.30, CBS College Sports presents Legends, the 1989 NCAA Lacrosse Championship. Join us as we commemorate the 20th anniversary of perhaps the greatest NCAA lacrosse title game of all time, featuring Syracuse and Johns Hopkins. It's a lacrosse Sunday from start to finish on CBS College Sports, the pulse of college sports. That comes up at 2.30 as Morgan gets up onto his feet. And he is walking under his own power, which is great to see as the crowd gives him a nice round of applause. Good to see Morgan heading off to the sideline under his own power there with his team up by three. Well, you look at the change. Right over there, it's on the floor right there. Of the goal scores from 2008. Let's go, Mutes, Keith, Siminski, Hyde, they're gone. Tota Kroll, Morgan, and DeLuca. Unbelievable that they're able Don't to replace that type of goal scoring and senior I leadership mean, with a young right offense. With the other but I, I think the key him, thing was Morgan was the glue, the senior. He was a big part of that, that offense in 2008. He was that calming force, a go-to guy, a leader on and off the field. This new group of stars for Portland, just a little over two minutes away from a national championship. But first, Gettysburg has possession. The drive to the cage and the shot misses to the near side, backed up by the Bullets. They maintain. 
with 2.27 to go in the ballgame. Division three national championship on the line. Ball checked, it's loose. Gettysburg will keep it. Portland continues the defensive intensity. Gettysburg needs a shot in a hurry here. Double team up top and come. O'Donnell straight away. O'Donnell, a senior, shoots, misses wide of the net. Cortland gets there on the backup. Great hustle by the sophomore, Justin Schneidman. Schneidman, the big strider. Great hustle by the sophomore, Adam John Jay. Got to see a lot of him when he played his high school ball up in Cross River, New York. I know Cortland alum Barry Bocklet's happy to see Justin Schneidman do some work Once here today. Down to stand in, guys. Cortland clears. Cortland alums everywhere closer to celebrating a national championship victory. Step down! Step down! Delay! So the officials had told, as you can hear, Cortland to keep it in. They did not. They stepped out, as indicated by the refs down on the field. And so Gettysburg will get another possession. Still not out of the realm of possibility by any stretch here for the Bullets with a buck 40 to go. But with the way Cortland's been playing defense, Gettysburg really needs to figure it out in a hurry. To the net, O'Donnell saved by Hippenbecker. Kicks it away, a big one late. What a save by the senior netminder, Hippenbecker. Up by three, a late charge here by Gettysburg. Been playing so loose here this afternoon. Portland with possession. Now a minute away from celebrating a championship. Timeout is called on the field. 109 to go in the fourth quarter. Portland with the ball with a three goal advantage. Going for their second title, their first since 2006. That's the last time Cortland won, and what a spectacular game this was, Clark. Cortland against Salisbury. Ryan Semensky tied it at 12 with less than a minute to play. In overtime, Ben Gable everywhere, making a ton of huge saves. And then with two seconds left in OT, Mike Felice scored the game winner. Cortland wins its first ever D3 national title, 13-12. But no Gable is what out. stands out to me. I mean, he was just and unbelievable in that overtime. Done. Anytime a goalie in a sudden death overtime situation has to face that many shots, I mean, he was fantastic in that championship game. Well, he played his best lacrosse of his life that afternoon. That was a magical game, one that will be remembered for quite some time when Portland captured that national championship. But right now, just a little bit over a minute, Coach Bevel gets his first national championship. This is Coach Bevel's third season, so he's not the head man in 06. Has been 07 and 08, so he's been here two straight times, both times denied by Salisbury. Now he's one minute away. Third time's a charm, and you have to really tip your cap to Coach Bevel and his ability to take a young offensive group and mold them. A bunch of selfless individuals that spread the ball around. Goal scorers from all angles. A fantastic coaching job by the Portland Red Dragon staff. Gettysburg gets it back, the National Player of the Year, Tommy Keough, a senior playing in his final game. He wants to end on a high note here. Shot, score for Gettysburg. Not quite done yet with 26 seconds to go. It's Joe Brody in front, so the lead now two for Cortland. We'll watch it from the turnover. I mentioned earlier in the open, Tommy Keough just ignites transition. He does it here, running the break like an offensive midfielder. He spots up Brody, and Brody does a nice job of selling the defense low to create that space. Griffo won the faceoff cleanly for Gettysburg. Big win for Griffo, first time in the ball game in a while. We're down to 17 seconds, but Gettysburg has a possession here. Shot saved by Hippenbecker. He stuffs him with eight seconds to go. 
He'll throw it the length of the field. Cortland has it. They will sit on it. It's over. Two out of four for the Red Dragons. Cortland, 2009 Division III National Champion. Number 19, Morgan holding the trophy. That injury that he had a few minutes ago not bothering him so much right now. He's a national champion. Two straight years, Cortland denied by Salisbury. The Red Dragons are back in the winner's circle for the first time since 2006. Cortland has won two of the last four. 9-7 the final, valiant last charge by Gettysburg. Plenty more from Foxborough after this. One of the best poses in all of sports. The championship team huddled around the championship trophy. Portland Division Three national champs, 9-7 the final over Gettysburg Park. The Bullets made a nice charge at the end, but too little too late as Cortland played well, really from the second quarter on to win their second title in the last four years. And I was so impressed with their ability to do the little things. Ground balls, physical play. The Red Dragons played with a level of intensity. They could smell a national championship and they closed the deal with great senior leadership. Pippenbecker in the cage, Morgan at the midfield. This is a special group of seniors after so many departed stars a year ago. Cortland is celebrating. They are celebrating in central New York. They're national champs. Once again, our final score, 9-7. Cortland wins the Division Three National Championship for Matt McConnell, Paul Carcaterra, and our entire CBS College crew. I'm Jason Chandler. Get complete coverage of the NCAA Championships at NCAA.com. For the latest scores, news, highlights, and analysis, log on to CBSCollegeSports.com. This has been a presentation of CBS College Sports, the pulse of college sports. Congratulations, Cortland, and thanks for watching. Post news from Foxborough in just a moment. More AC. The Division Three has been decided. The national championship goes to the Red Dragons of Portland as they defeat Gettysburg by the final score of nine to seven. And our big day of college lacrosse has just begun here on CBS College Sports. The Division Three national championship is in the books. We'll have.